Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, I know it's the last day, last session of the day. Uh, today we'll be talking to you a little bit about uh, some work we've been doing with OpenWhisk uh, and OpenStack Swift to create uh, this AWS Lambda and S3 uh, functionality. So I'm Sean Murakami from IBM. This is my colleague, Andrew, Andy Bodine. And I hope you find this session informative. What we're going to do is first talk a little bit about uh, serverless computing or functional computing models, uh, platforms such as OpenWhisk that help um, deliver and drive those types of functions, as well as how we've integrated um, uh, OpenStack Swift with, uh, Open, with uh, OpenWhisk to drive a lot of these functions. So at the end, we'll, we'll show you as a live demo, and um, in the next few weeks, we'll make a lot of the, all the code that we have in the demo available to you for download on GitHub. So to start off, I wanted to start with um, some historical background of how we've migrated and transitioned to development in the cloud. Over the past 10 years, we've seen a steady improvement on how developers can create and deploy applications into production. Um, a lot of developers traditionally worked on bare metal. The time to get those resources took weeks. Um, the cost of the resources are very expensive. And more recently, we, they moved to a, a new virtual machine model or container model, which helps them deliver and test out their applications a lot quicker. But more recently, what we've seen is that there's this whole notion of functional computing or functional development. <clears throat> and with this shift between paths and functions, um, the developers are really focusing more on the, the business and service requirements um, and to help kind of get those functions quickly and available to other applications or service that may need to consume them. So we're really looking at a microservices uh, deployment model. When we think about microservices and cloud native applications, there's this notion of this 12 factor application. Um, 12 factor application model really helps one look, and look at and focus on how do I create my application, what are the steps and points that I need to focus on when I, when I create a microservice type of application. And so as we move into this serverless area, a lot of the, the functions and factors of the 12-factor app are being handled by the, by the platform itself. So if you look at things such as IoT applications, those, <clears throat> those types of applications are really consumed through this event model. So we look at event programming. Um, as I mentioned, IoT type of applications, when you have devices or endpoints that trigger some type of uh, data, for example, a change in database or sensor information that you get from a, a weather sensor or a door jam uh, sensor, uh, these type of things, typically you want to have some kind of action or response to those actions. And so consuming these functional applications make it really easy for, for those event models to consume those services. So if we look at things like cognitive trending or server-side backends for mobile apps, um, as developers for those types of applications, you really want to have the ability to quickly spin up um, resources and fu from a functionality perspective to help drive uh, the changes or responses to those sensors information. And so the, over the past few years, um, there have been different uh, computing services. For, so for example, Amazon Lambda uh, is an event-driven compute service, which Amazon provides to run your code in response to events, and it takes some kind of action. Um, and this is really, really supports this functional programming model. Similarly, um, we have OpenWhisk. And OpenWhisk was announced uh, earlier this year in, I think, February. Uh, by IBM, and this is a model, uh, an open source platform, where anyone can download the code, deploy it, and, and get that same type of event-driven uh, platform model. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, OpenWhisk is an open source platform that executes code in response to any type of events. And it's also it, it also provides this sort of 
polyglot uh, development model. So you can write your actions in any language or, or even deploy them as Docker containers. So as I mentioned, OpenWIT supports many growing different types of workloads from ILT applications, um, sensor data, you want to invoke some kind of action based on type of, some type of event. Um, we could use OpenWIST to trigger different uh, um, steps inside of your DevOps process. So within the pipeline, say you may want to um, send, out any, send an alert to a group or maybe trigger a bot to do some type of event. Um, OpenWISC really helps enable you to basically do any type of uh, functional or service, serverless type of computing with ease. Um, another example is when you look at like big data, you have a lot of things that you may want to do within your, your analytics pipeline. So as it's going through that pipeline, you may want to um, do some type of action or some type of analysis, which is very highly, could be highly specialized. And so OpenWIS allows you to invoke those types of functions really easily in a really scalable manner. So to kind of sum up um, how you interact with OpenWISC, um, this is a very simplistic diagram of what the programming, programming model means. And so at the top, you have rules. So as a developer, you define the rules of what happens when something, some event comes in. And so these actions handle the events that are emitted by triggers or sensors uh, that are generated by services or, or <coughs> incoming feeds. As I mentioned, the triggers, there are, again, a class of events. So things and feeds such as uh, Twitter feeds from social media, data changes, geolocation updates, weather updates, user input, all these type of things uh, can help feed and drive different actions um, utilizing the OpenWISC platform. And what do I mean by actions? So actions are really um, a set of code that you define that do some type of event um, based on that trigger information. And all of these actions can be stringed together. So again, going, looking at a functional programming model, you can have a higher level function, invoke other functions that can, you can string together to actually um, coordinate uh, a meaningful outcome of something that you want to do in accordance to an event. I also mentioned that OpenWIS supports a polyglot development environment. So these actions can be defined and programmed in languages such as JavaScript, Python, Java, Apple, OpenSwift, and other uh, programming languages that you're really accustomed to and familiar with. They, again, OpenWhisk also supports Docker containers. So you can take any of those languages or even binaries, drop them into a Docker container, uh, register the action with OpenWhisk and have them execute uh, easily and consumable through an API. So as I mentioned, the consumption model, um, OpenWhisk at the high level has this notion of an API, API proxy, which will route any incoming request for an action or trigger down to, the, to, down to invoke uh, your particular action. So there's a REST interface that can be consumed by browsers, web apps, mobile devices, et cetera. For example, uh, if I want to get customer data um, for, that my application needs, it's a simple request through, the, through OpenWhisk to run an action to get my customers from a backend data source. So you all really came here to see how we've integrated this event-driven programming model with OpenStack Swift. Um, and Andy will go over some, an example of how we've correlated uh, an AWS S3 and Amazon Lambda function to an OpenStack Swift um, 
webhook and an open whisk action. So how many of you are familiar with uh, middleware? Okay, so a good ha handful of you. So for those of you that are not, <laughs> not familiar with middleware, um, it's really uh, a way to extend uh, functionality within, <clears throat> within OpenStack Swift and other OpenStack projects. Um, you can think of this as adding custom code into a pipeline um, and in our case, it's going to be a transformation, uh, oh, sorry, a webhook that can call out to any uh, URL. So in, open, in Swift, a majority of the middleware sit at the proxy server. So as requests comes through, for example, if I'm going to create a container or add an object, they all come through the API server and then trickle down into uh, the various other sub services like the accounting services and object storage. So, that's this picture you see on your right-hand side. The middleware, as I was mentioned earlier, um, feed off this WSGI server and sit within this pipeline. So there can be one or more middleware components that make up your, your API pipeline to process and handle various uh, actions that a, a user request kind of goes through. So uh, along with that, um, there's this concept of system metadata. And so we, for this example, we need to be able to save a URL and associate that with a, a container. And so we use, utilize system metadata to assimilate the user's actions for cr when they create a container um, and associate that with that URL. So we store this as system metadata which is user specific or account specific. Um, and we pass in a, a specified key that we have in our code and we'll show you this in a few minutes along with the value or the URL that they provided. And that's really a, the way that Swift enables us as uh, developers to store uh, information securely. So Andy's gonna go through the demo uh, from a high level of what AWS and Lambda, their example on their website uh, goes through and how we've enabled OpenStack, Swift, and OpenWhisk. All right, thanks, Sean. <clears throat> good to go. All right, so uh, as Sean alluded to, um, if you go to Amazon's Lambda site, there is an example there it's literally this example. Um, basically, what you're looking at, for those of you familiar with S3 storage, um, they have this concept of buckets. And it's analogous to Swift, OpenStack Swift's containers. So in their example, a user is going to upload a, uh, a, an image or a photo up to a source bucket. And then <clears throat> some event is kicked off in Amazon Lambda, and a function goes, takes that image, and it's going to create a thumbnail of that image, and then upload that thumbnail back to a target bucket. So it, it's a separate bucket, but they're kind of linked in a way, okay? Um, so that's the example, and what, what this session's all about is how did we replicate that example or do the same thing with OpenStack Swift and OpenWhisk. So what you're looking at is pretty much the exact same things, just different terminologies. So uh, like I said, in, in, in Swift, we have containers. So we're going to have a source container. We're going to go through uploading an image to that source container. And like Sean talked about, we've injected or we've defined and added to the middleware pipeline in OpenStack Swift, this webhook that when you upload an image to that Swift container, this webhook is gonna reach out to an OpenWhisk action, and that action is gonna do something similar to what Amazon Lambda is doing to create that thumbnail, and then it's gonna upload it to a, you know, its buddy, its buddy container, it's the target container here. So, it's pretty much the exact same thing, just different technologies. 
So again, how is that implemented? Um, really all it consists of is a, a piece of Swift middleware that we've defined and installed into the OpenStack, OpenStack Swift runtime and an OpenWhisk action. And what we're going to show you next, I'm going to get into kind of just a, a high level kind of basic overview of the, what it takes in terms of code wise to implement these. And then we're going to get into the demo and hopefully that just comes together for us. So middleware wise, you know, Sean talked about uh, the WSGI server and the pipeline uh, that you can hook code into. So literally, if, if you go to OpenStack Swift, the developer website, you'll find a piece of code that looks very similar to this. It's an example of how to inject a webhook as a middleware into the proxy server for Swift. So uh, you can see here, really what we want to do is we want to map the sysmeta, which in OpenStack Swift, for those of you who are not familiar, um, you have the storage of the actual ob uh, objects themselves, but there's, then there's also associated metadata, as Sean had alluded to earlier. So really what we're doing here is when the request comes in, we're going to look up, we're going to basically associate or map those, the webhook and the authentication, whatever we need to do uh, in terms of authentication. We're going to grab those out of the incoming request. We're going to map those to the sysmeta, system metadata. We're going to send that down the pipeline. And that's really, just hang on. Uh, on, there we are. <laughs> Um, so that's, we're, we're mapping the meta, metadata here, right, from the incoming request. And then we go ahead and we send that down the pipeline. So this is going to be the WSGI pipeline, the middleware pipeline. We're going to send that down. We're going to let Swift process the request. And it's going to generate a response, right? That's the response we're actually going to send back to the original requester. Past that, we're going to do a couple of things. We're interested in a couple types of actions on that request. Uh, specifically, you know, for, for our example, we're primarily considered with if the request method is a put, which means we've uploaded an object to that container, we've added an object to that container, or delete, um, that could be something too that we might be interested in, to, in terms of actions on that container. And then the rest of this kind of uh, the rest of this is kind of how we hook into the open whisk action. So we take that, uh, so we, we're going to generate, sorry, with this, with this, uh, with the request headers for the webhook here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to gen, we're going to create a new request. It's going to take that webhook value, which that webhook is the URL to our open whisk action. Okay. We're going to add the authorization so that when the request gets there, it's actually allowed to do what it's trying to do. And then we're going to bundle up this kind of this object. And that's, that's really how we're going to tell the OpenWhisk action, uh, one, what the object is, right? So we're passing in the actual object that we've uploaded. And we're also giving it the necessary, you know, Swift URL and also the token so that it can once it's done generating that thumbnail, it can actually do something with that thumbnail. It can upload that thumbnail to a new container. Okay? And then the rest of this is, let's send the request, right? So pretty straightforward. Again, you can find a similar example on the developer site for OpenStack Swift. Um, let's get into, uh, actually, one more thing. So once you defined this middleware, you got to actually put it into Swift. You got to, you got to make make Swift aware of it, right? The proxy server. Really, all that is is you got to place, you got to place the webhook.py, which is just what we were looking at. You got to put it at the right part of the file system for uh, Swift, okay? And then you're going to update your proxy server conf. This the pipeline Sean was talking about. That's literally defined here. It's slightly abbreviated, but it's going to show you that. This is our, the webhook filter that we defined, and this is where we're hooking it into the pipeline. Okay? All right. 
Now let's get into on to the open whisk side of things, the action, like what does that consist of? So as Sean mentioned, um, open whisk, it, one option you have if you don't want to leverage the built-in uh, run times, if you have some custom thing, uh, it allows you to bring your own Docker image. So whatever you decide to put in there, you package in a Docker con image, container image, and then you can associate that to your, your webhook in, in, in OpenWhisk, okay? So this is really, for those of you who aren't familiar with Docker, if you read this, it's pretty straightforward, especially if you <laughs> know Linux commands for Ubuntu. Um, really, we're just, this is just kind of some preliminary stuff. This is the meat of the setup of the image, okay? We're gonna grab node, and we're gonna install it, all right? And then the rest of the stuff is just kind of setting up the, when the container is run, uh, what's the context that it's running from, okay? That's what Workdir does, so it sets up when, you, uh, when the container runs, where it's the path in the file system that that's gonna kick off at. And then the rest of this is just, let's copy the actual uh, whisk action node.js code into that container, all right? And then we just give it a port and tell, it, tell Docker how we want our container to actually run, all right? Now I'm gonna get into the actual, uh, that node.js code, what gets put in right here, this copy server, this is copying the server directory into that path, this working directory path, okay? So it's really simple, it's really straightforward. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Node.js web, uh, web framework Express, this should look pretty straightforward. Um, really what we're saying is <clears throat> when we get a post on, ah, I think I messed this up, this is, this is a put. Um, but uh, when we hit this pass slash run, that's when, so this is inside our open, open whisk action. When we get a request that comes to this path, we're gonna pull out the Swift object, right? That's that, that's that object that we packaged in in the middleware when we, sent, when we made the webhook request. So now, right here, we're pulling it out, okay? And we're saying, if that request to Swift was a put request, now we gotta do something. So this Swift client transform image function, I don't have the details of this here, but all it's gonna do is gonna take that image, it's gonna use an image library, create a thumbnail of that image, and then it's gonna use the uh, Swift credentials that are in the payload here, that's why we're passing it in, okay? It's gonna use those credentials, and it's gonna upload that image to the target container, which is what we had, I'll show the example, okay? And then the rest of this is just straightforward. It's sending the result of the whisk action uh, back to, you know, whoever sent the request. In this sense, it would be our OpenStack uh, Swift middleware. All right? Okay, enough slides. Let's get into the demo. Hopefully, the, as everyone says, the demo gods are with us here. All right. Get that out of the way here. All right, so um, in here. Hey, Lars, the fun. Ah, yes. Let me increase this. It's, uh, shift plus. It's more. One more. Okay. That's good. Is that big enough for everyone? Good. Good in the back. All right. Awesome. You move this. Uh, More? More? Okay. How's that? Good? Awesome. Let me just make it so it's not way off the page here. All right. So for this demo, I just have a server running. Um, what it's got in it is it's got OpenStack Swift in a standalone mode. No other OpenStack components, just that. And it happens to be running in a container. Um, I can do a Docker PS here. And that's going to be a lot of output. Let me make this a little nicer for us to look at here. It's OK. OK. 
So hopefully that's a little easier to see here. This SAIO, that's our actual OpenStack Swift container. So we just have that process, or those, we have that uh, OpenStack Swift in the container here. Uh, we can see it's running at port 8080 on this server's IP. All right. Um, we have this SAO UI here, which that's going to be the UI that we just created for this demo. All right. So that's going to help, help us show you what we're talking about. The rest of these containers are, is open whisk. All right. It's a collection of containers. Don't really need to get into the details of what those are, but that's what the rest of those containers are. Okay. Um, all right, so there isn't any setup to do with OpenStack Swift. We've already taken that middleware, put it in place, and it's running inside the container. Uh, what we do need to do is create the OpenWhisk action. All right, now we have this script here. Let's create thumbnail action. All right, and I'm going to run this and then just kind of talk through what it's doing. All right, so really quick. Uh, this is Docker building, okay? So this is Docker saying, or because we defined our whisk action as a, with a Docker file, Docker went and built that image for us, all right? So that's right up till here. That's the Docker image building. And then uh, this next part, we just run a simple whisk command, say whisk action create. We specify the Docker image because we tagged it with a name, so we associated uh, that image name with this action called thumbnail. If I look in my Docker images, I can type OK. All right, there we go. So we built this thumbnail action, action image. That's the actual container image that's going to run when OpenWhisk kicks off our action from the webhook in the OpenStack Swift middleware. OK? Um, and if I look here, Whisk action list. There's my there's my there's my thumbnail action. So now we have the action set up, okay, with a route so that our webhook can actually hit that. And when it hits that action in Open Whisk, it's going to run our our container image. Now, <clears throat> what I'm showing you here is the list of activations. So this is kind of historical data in Open Whisk of what actions have run. And I'm really just showing you this so we can get an I Really, I'm just going to get a count of how many times these have run. So that way, 10 minus 1, you know, the top line here. So we got nine activations so far. So when we get in the demo, we should see one more activation here, OK? Um, all right, so our risk activation is set up. OpenStack Swift's ready. Namespace. Uh, I, I, yeah, it's, it's worth mentioning that um, OpenWhisk has some kind of delineation. It, it has a, del a separation so that um, this user that we set up, right? So I have this user called Swift Demo, all right? And this is actually the, the key that we're going to need to to associate with that that uh, member from the. Uh, the OpenStack Swift middleware code, we were pulling the webhook header and then the webhook auth. So this is going to be the actual webhook auth, OK? And uh, the webhook is just going to be the URL to our OpenWhisk action. Um, and what Sean was saying about namespaces is uh, in OpenWhisk, it, it's isolation for your actions. So, um, I, if I was a different user, I could have another thumbnail, uh, another action called thumbnail. They would be totally isolated. So this is within the Swift demo user namespace, right? All right. Now I'm going to hop to the UI, um, see how that's going. All right. Let me just refresh this page here. So here's my server. Uh, that's where this terminal is open, this demo at demo. Demo machine, that's its IP, 192.168.99.101. And if you, I can show you here. Uh, right, so the UI is running at port 3000. Right, so that's what I'm hitting right here. This is our demo UI. 
All right, so first things first. We need to, uh, let's see, let's just kind of get a refresher. Uh, now that we look through the code, the, the, the example that we're trying to do, we need to upload an image to a Swift container. So what we're going to do is we're going to interact with OpenStack Swift right here, right? So I'm going to provide the Swift URL. And remember, the container is running at port 8080, right? I have some demo account user and password here. So test account, tester user. All right. So we've logged in, or we've authenticated with OpenStack Swift. And you can see for the account test, we don't have any containers. So first thing we got to do, we got to create that source container that we're going to upload the image to. Now, um, when we create this container, we want to associate it with that open whisk action. Okay, so that's what we're, that's what this is is this webhook. Okay, so open whisk. I'm just going to hop back to the terminal real quick. At port 80 here, this guy nginx. So that's our front. That's our uh, that's our that's our proxy. Uh, into the OpenWhisk containers. So this really is what we're going to hit here. And that's when we're specifying 192.168.99.101, no port, it's going to default to 80 here. Okay? And uh, so it's gonna, that's really what we're targeting is the Nginx container. So we have namespaces, Swift demo. We were talking about this, the, na the Swift demo namespace. And we've defined our action thumbnail. Okay? So that's the webhook. We need to get the token that we, that we queried from Whisk right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. All right, there it is. And Swift container, we'll just call it demo. All right. Let's go ahead and create that. Boom, done. Swift container is ready. Now uh, I can click on that, and we can see, so this is container called, called Swift container called demo. And we can see right here uh, that the webhook has been associated with container, right? Because uh, if you remember from the Swift middleware, uh, the request coming in has the, the, the webhook headers in it, right? So the, the, the client, the front end, should have access to that. It should know that. And that's how we're able to display that here. Uh, it's an empty container. There are no, no, no objects. So let's go ahead and create one. Um, we're going to get a big image here. Let's go with this one here. All right, this is a pretty big image. Um, so we're going to upload that. It's locally, so it's quick. But it is big. If you see here, it's a little over 2 meg here. Um, and if I click on it, you can see I'm not zoomed in. This is the actual size. So this image is actually quite big, right? Just scrolling around. It's, it's, it's pretty large. Um, and what we're going to do is, well, what should already be happening, because we've associated that webhook in the middleware, is an action, or a open with, our, our thumbnail open whisk action should have already been creating a thumbnail. All right? So uh, let's, let's see if that actually happened. Um, activation list, I think we had 10. We got one. Something happened. Let's see if uh, the right thing happened. <laughs> um, all right. I just need to refresh this view here. I'm just logging in again. Bear with me. All right. Well, we got a container, and it's a thumbnails container. So. Our whisk action did something. Let's see if it's actually in there. And there's our thumbnail image. And you can see by the size of it, it is significantly smaller. Uh, if I click on this, it's obviously much smaller. OK? So right there, that's, that's the demo. That's, that's literally the example. Um, so we put that image in the container. Uh, open, open whisk created our target container for us, created that thumbnail, put it there. And all we had to do is upload the original. All right. That is the end of the demo. Let me hop back to the slides here and let Sean take over again. Thanks, Andy. So, 
Yeah, so to summarize, uh, we're going to have all this code uploaded once we start, once we clean it all up. <laughs> uh, but in addition to this, again, what you saw here was a, a sort of a webhook model uh, or integration into OpenStack Swift. What we're doing at IBM is trying to extend that functionality to be more event driven. So the whole idea here is to enable Swift to take a lot of these events and be able to publish them onto message hubs or message buses, things like Kafka, RabbitMQ, Zacker, et cetera. Um, and so at the moment, there's a current patch out there. It's hard to see because it's in gray, but it's at the bottom. If you click on the link, you'll see our current uh, our patch for that information. So what we're trying to do is really contribute back to the community, help extend the, these capabilities of, of Swift. So some of these things are going to include notification APIs, uh, uh, cloud inner surface notifications, and, and other, other things like monitoring. So what we have here is a list of resources, the example that we saw for Lambda, the example we have uh, for WISC, if you want to go and download it, deploy it yourself, uh, along with uh, how to create OpenStack middleware. And again, the demo code link is, uh, is active, but right now we don't have any code push, but we'll be pushing in the next week. And you'll be able to pull down everything you saw today. Uh, if you have a server, it'll deploy every, we have scripts to deploy everything as containers. Um, and you should be able to run that same, exact same demo um, on your own system. So we have a few minutes. If there's any questions, we'll, we'll take them. If not, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, any, any questions? Is there a mic here or no mic? No. All right. Which alarm? Uh, it doesn't really matter. You create an alarm. Yes. To instantiate your function. Yes. Uh, the scalometer uh, publishes into the webhook uh, a lot of data from the specification that appears. Okay. Uh, is open voice is able to pass through those data directly to the function? So I, I think it depends on um, how the proxy is configured. So if the message body is too, too big, it won't be able to do it. So we might have to chunk the data. But it, it, let's talk about general, the generic case. Uh, okay. would, would it be possible to pass the data from, like, from salometer alarm? Oh, salometer alarm. Yeah. OK, sorry. Salometer alarm to open WISC? Yes. So if you're able to configure the alarm to call an HTTP request, then yes. Yeah. And then it really becomes down to how the data gets pulled in. So you may want to have the action pull the data rather than push it through the payload, right? So you could have an action talk to your data source if you're warehousing the data at some other data source. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Question. So uh, just to clarify, do we, do we see uh, current actions in the community that are moving to this event model? Yeah. Yeah, so that, I think that's what we're, tr we're proposing, a, bl a blueprint for this. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah, so. Um, so the question is what happens if the invocation to the WISC action fails? So that's, that's a good question. And one of the things um, we've looked into or we're proposing is it really comes down to how you uh, implement the middleware. So you could have retry, you could also have it offload to a message queue. 
and do asynchronous requests. Um, but again, it's an HTTP request, therefore it's best effort. So from WISC to Swift, back to Swift? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, the way we handle it, and it's not necessarily the, the only way or the best way, is on the request from the, the middleware, we package the, the user credential in the payload. So when the, by the time the action gets it, it reads that out of the payload, it's all the, the small snippet, the payload information, it'll suck that credential out and reuse that on the re response back. Could you repeat the question? So, uh, uh, is designed to locate, uh, so we have uh, 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 Yeah, so these are completely separate processes and instances. So we actually have to tell WISC what to call back to. And so within the action, we have to coordinate um, passing the callback URL, which is the Swift URL, as well as the auth token of the user that's that's creating the, the container. Um, and then we feed that all, we pass that all through the payload to the action so it knows where to call back and what authentication credentials to call Swift back to, to, to upload the image. Yeah. Here's another one. Question. The rules, okay, so there's a notion of uh, triggers and actions. So you can think of a trigger as a higher level way to kick off one or more actions. Do we have to, I don't know if we have the chart here. So it, it's, it defines um, how the trigger asso is associated or calls the following actions down the pipe. Does that make sense? Okay, so there is no requirement to use a trigger. So you can, uh, from the API standpoint for WISC, you can invoke a trigger or an action directly. To simplify the demo, we just call the action. Okay. Sure, okay, yes, that, that is true. So if that happens, that's why um, the way we do it is not necessarily the best way to do it. Um, so in that, in that case, we would have to either federate the credential or have some common credentials like integrating with Keystone. The, which action? Spam, so like a, an attack on top of the WISC API. Is that the question? Um, uh, uh, yeah. So right. So yeah. There's a, there's 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 isolation at the namespace level. Is that what you're asking? If anyone can. So the question, if someone writes a malicious action that gets executed within the OpenWhisk environment, so most or all of these actions are run as Docker, in the Docker container. So within the Docker, you have an isolated namespace, which has no root privileges. You can still, you mean like call out to uh, do a DDoS attack from, from WISC. Um, I, I'm not sure, we can talk about it offline, about how the security model is um, and how they're trying to um, isolate and um, make it more secure. Okay, 
Dan, do you know the lifters? Well, that question comes up. I think they're working on performance metrics. If you were to play around with action in the host environment, would you still be able to get the same metrics you can see in the monitoring dashboard all the more seconds you But is that in the open source, the metric collection? Which project? Stole it? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> there's a lot of projects going on. <laughs> no, stole it. No. Do you know about stole it? <laughs> yeah, this, this work was kicked off earlier in the year as a proof of concept, so we decided to uh, demonstrate it as an example. I know we, we do have like, like this event uh, model. Uh, that's another group in IBM that's working on. We, we do have communication with them. Um, and some of the lessons learned we have here, we've communicated over with them as well. But uh, we're not, we're, the purpose of this was not to create another project. It was more to demonstrate the capabilities of Swift and OpenWhisk. Any other questions? Great, thank you. Uh, hopefully you had a good summit and uh, Thank you.